let's implement the bit circuit as described in chapter three of the elements of computing systems. It's a fairly simple circuit. It's um, an input, an output, and a load pin. And then it is a, a D flip flop to store the state of the bit. The bit is either transmitted as part of the state of I, or it is the state of whatever the output is fed back into the flip flop according to the state of the load. And the way that that's determined is through a, a multiplexer. So if the load, load pin, and let me flip the orientation. So if the load is high, that means we want to take the value of the input. But if the load is low, we want to take whatever the output state, <clears throat> the output state of the D flip flop is. So that means we want, let me flip this around too. So the output of the flip flop goes to out. However, out is also fed back in as the input of the mux in the case when the load is zero. And then of course the output from the mux is the input of the flip-flop. Now there's also a clock pin, which I will go ahead and add. I'm not exactly sure how to represent the clocks in logic sim yet, but this seems to make sense. So we will face this north and I forgot to set the ins and the outs. I'll go back and do that here in a second. So this is the clock. Sometimes this is represented D and Q. I think in the book, the ins and the outs were called in and out, but Logisim doesn't, doesn't like that very much. Okay, so uh, set and reset. These are, since we're using the, the primitive DFF that's implemented in Logisim, uh, I mean, these, these signals aren't available in the book, but I'm not gonna implement a DFF here, similar to how the book didn't do it either. So we'll just, these signals are when one, then uh, they get either, the, the Q either gets set to one or zero regardless of the input. So we'll just wire these to ground. And then let's make sure all of these are set correct. So. So that is an input, which is correct. This is an input. This is an input. So this is our output. And that looks correct to me. So let's implement a user interface to just test this out. So we'll need our bit component and we'll need a switch. And we'll need two switches. And switch number one will be our input. 
And then switch number two will be our load signal. And then we'll need a clock. And then an LED. Let's test out this bit component. So let's turn our clock on. And so if we set D, nothing should happen because load is false. And the minute that we turn load on the next clock cycle, the LED should come on. And if we turn load off, then if clock cycles pass, LED should stay lit and it does. Now, if we turn load on and turn off D, the next clock cycle, LED should go off. And again, if we turn D on without load on, the LED should stay off. So this looks like this uh, looks like it tests out.